Well, thank you very much. Uh, likewise, thank you very much, uh, Professor Zade, for uh, the opportunity to have this discussion with you. Uh, in 1990s, you proposed computing with words and computational theory of perception. Uh, would you please explain the underlying uh, of uh, computing with words and uh, significance of that one over computing with measurements? Well, I'll be pleased to do that. So if you look at uh, science, uh, you find that uh, in science, numbers are respected, but words are not. So that if you open the paper and you see no equations, no mathematics, that most engineers, scientists will say that's no good. Uh, if there are many equations, they say it may be good. So there is this tradition, tradition of respect for numbers and lack of respect for words, deep-seated tradition. So uh, back in 1973, I wrote a paper in which I introduced the concept of what I called linguistic variable. It's a variable whose values are words. And that is what humans use all the time. Talking about age, is it young, very young, not young, old, etc., etc., etc. About height, tall, very tall. Humans use words. And if you go back in history, they didn't use numbers so much. It's only in recent 100 years, 200 years, that people began to use numbers, 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 numbers. But uh, today, when you listen to radio, watch TV, you find that people frequently use numbers. They say 25% are for this and 35% against it. Anyway, but uh, what I said in that paper, 1973 paper, is that the use of words may have some advantages so this was counter to conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom was words are not good, numbers are better. I said something different. I said that words can be very useful. And then I described how to use words, how to compute with words. So you can add small and large, you can multiply them, you can do all kinds of things with words. So this was my first paper in which I used words. So my 1990 paper is rooted in my 1973 paper. It came later. It came later. And, uh, and so an idea which occurred to me at a later point was this, that humans use perceptions. You drive a car, do you compute anything? No. Do you measure anything? No. You see? You go chef in the restaurant. Does chef in the restaurant measure anything? No. Doesn't need it. When uh, you cook something, do you use measurement? No. I mean, once in a while, you a few pinches of salt and so forth. You see, in much of what you do during the day, you really don't compute and you don't measure. And yet, you can do so much. Sports, basketball, people can do all kinds of wonderful things. No computation, no measurement. So AI, artificial intelligence, was measurement-based, logic-based. AI, incidentally, has never been very enthusiastic about fuzzy logic. AI has always been committed to classical Aristotelian logic. So, uh, so then what I said is that the reason why AI has not been able to solve many problems is because AI used measurement-based theory. But to solve those problems, you need perception-based theory. AI and DARPA, they're interested in automation of driving a car. 
after all these years, today we can construct cars which can uh, don't need the driver in light traffic, but nothing that can work in city traffic, nothing in New York, nothing in Tehran, nothing in Istanbul, nothing in Calcutta. People can do it. No measurements, no computations, no nothing, you see. So humans have certain abilities. And then I said, AI has made a mistake in putting all of its eggs into the basket of classical logic. We have to develop a capability to compute with perceptions. But how? My suggestion was take a perception, but describe it in a natural language. You see? I have a perception that most Swedes are tall. That's my perception. So I say most Swedes are tall. But then I ask question, OK, most Swedes are tall. What is the average height of Swedes? So I want to come up with an answer to that question. But I cannot do it using AI. I cannot use it using traditional methods. So I said, take most Swedes are tall and represent it in a mathematical form using fuzzy logic. And you once represented in fuzzy logic, then you can compute. This was the idea behind the computational theory of perception. I submitted an article to AI magazine and some controversy, but eventually they published. And the title of my article was A New Direction in AI toward a computation of theory of perception. They published it with the title A New Direction in AI. Now, but to understand this theory, you have to know something about natural languages and know something about fuzzy logic. The number of people who know both is not that large. So this theory had a sort of a slow thing, slow growth, because there are not so many people. However, if you use Google and Google computational theory of perceptions, you'll find hundreds, perhaps thousands, of results at this point. So there are many papers today in which they use this computational theory of perceptions for robotics, for this, for that, vision, speech recognition, many other things. But like many other things that I have done, uh, understanding has been slow. So based on uh, what you said about uh, artificial intelligence and uh, computation based on perception, is there any interplay between a learning or adaptive artificial intelligence and computational theory of perception? Yes. Well, what I can say is that there should be. There should be. But there is a large literature. This report on the impact of physiologic shows there are 237,000 papers with fuzzy in title. I can read a few, you see. So if you ask me, is there an interplay? It's, I don't do it myself, you see. I write only papers which are basic. So but whether other people have done it or not, this is difficult to tell, except, except for Google. If you use Google, then I think you will find many papers uh, doing that. Now, the concept of uh, adaptive systems is one of the concepts that suggests that fuzzy says to me, I've written something. The concept of adaptation, I said, how do we define it? And then eventually I said, you have to use fuzzy logic for that. So they define what you mean by adaptive system. You have to use fuzzy logic. Now today, it is used very widely, actually, 
uh, in so-called neurophysic systems. Neural systems are good at adaptation and learning. Neural system. They combine the two. Out of combination comes neurophysic systems. And in Japan, in particular, there are many, many products that are neurophysic. So, for example, refrigerator, refrigerator, neurophysic. So, uh, how is it used? Well, you use the refrigerator. You use freezer very infrequently. Other people use freezer frequently. The, refriger the neurophysic system checks as to whether you use freezer frequently or unfrequently and adjust the controls, you see, depending on how you use the refrigerator. This would be a good example of adaptation. So I would say the best example of uh, adaptation using fuzzy logic is neurophysic. There is also evolutionary. In evolutionary, genetic algorithm is also used there. Evolutionary also has to do with learning. And so there are many papers which are a mixture of evolutionary and fuzzy, so-called, and there are some, all three, neuro-fuzzy genetic systems, use all three, fuzzy, neuro, evolutionary. So that, uh, uh, as I said earlier, there are many, many papers, I can look at only a small number, but, there are fields in which adaptation plays an important role, and I'm not of some particular papers, and in which the two of them or the three of them are used together. Now, for example, uh, fuzzy logic transmission in Volkswagen, it checks how you use your transmission, you see? And uh, depending on how you use your transmission, your driver, it adjusts to your thing. Let me give you another example of adaptation. Biometric measurements. This is an IBM patent. That's for user identification. You type. Now, people use different pauses between letters, you see? So fuzzy logic checks the pattern of spaces and so forth, and it identifies you. Are you the correct user or not, you see? So this is adaptation. This is an IBM pattern. So actually there are many systems in which learning is used. Now, let me give you another example. As you asked me a question, now gave me a sort of refreshing memory. Thank you very much. Uh, inverted pendulum. Inverted pendulum. Uh, some Iranian, his name is Hamid Berenji, did that. So, in, people can do that. They can balance. So, his system learns it using fuzzy logic. You start with the pendulum, you don't program the pendulum, you raise it, it falls a few times, and then it begins to balance the pole. This is a good example of learning starting from zero, nothing, you see? That's a good example. Balancing an inverted pendulum, you may find it, uh, he has done a lot of work, he was working for NASA, now he has a company of his own. And NASA used fuzzy logic in, in space and various other things. And he was the person who designed the systems for NASA. Hamid Berenji.